The Kansas Police and Athletic Conference and the NAI are committed to maintaining the true spirit of competition in athletics. Please do your part by showing respect to every spectator, athlete, coach, and official involved in today's contest. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tabor College and Blue Jay Field here at the Hillsboro Sports Complex. Complex. My, my name is David Ediger, and I'll be bringing you the action today, as well as doing the PA on the on the field as we're down a person today. So, bear with me if I start giving lineups over the stream and doing PA over the stream and vice versa. But hopefully, we'll get through everything. Today's contest will feature the Avalon University Eagles come into town today with a perfect conference record at 6-0 under head coach Charlie Kennedy and Jeff Brewer, of course, leading the Blue Jays. Very impressive 4-2 start for the Blue Jays. Their overall record is 8-12, but the Blue Jays have played just an absolute brutal schedule playing several ranked teams out in Arizona. I'll be back with some more here in just a minute. might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5000. And we're back with number three, Chelsea Kurtz, leading off for the Eagles, a center fielder. Kurtz, a 5'5 senior out of Wichita, Kansas, from Goddard Eisenhower High School. So far, we've got two strikes as Carranza is off to a good start. Definitely not going to bunt here. Looking to slap it to the left side. Today you'll notice a little change in our lineup. Cheyenne Washington, our normal first baseman, is not here. Home in the dorm room, sick. So wish her the best if she's watching. Hopefully she can cheer on from there. And we see a foul ball hit to the left side by Kurtz. So a little shakeup today. We're going to get the starters here in just a minute. Is again trying to do both the PA here at the field and the stream, so we're going to have to mix things up just a little bit. We will set those lineups for you. But as you can tell, playing first base today will be Jordan Farron for the Blue Jays. So a little bit of a change in the lineup, but that's the way it goes. Balls hit to the left side out of play. One ball, two strikes, a count on the Eagles center fielder. She's trying to use her speed to get on. That one's fouled off as well, so the left side of the out of play area, getting a workout here right now. Little half swing, hit to the shortstop, picked up right away, and her speed definitely got down the line quickly as Darcy, very good at shortstop, gets rid of that ball quick, but that one not hit hard enough, and Kurtz down the line. Now batting right fielder, number two, Kazem Wood. As we, as we see, we see Coach Brewer coming out to find out exactly. I'm not sure.
sure if he thought maybe she stepped out of the box. Actually, the other day at Bethany, we did have that called on us. As they said, we contacted the ball out of the box. I believe that's a rule change. I think that used to be an out, but now they just come back and hit again. That's what happened to Bethany of the day. So Wood steps in for Avila with Kurtz on first. Carranza gets the sign. And she's down to second. So you can see right away kind of the game plan for the Eagles get on and run. There's Ayala. Good catcher behind the plate. A lot of speed there on the on the base pass for the Eagles to start this first inning. That one's fouled off to the right side. So Wood, a little late. and 2 is the count trying to bunt I was a little confused if she's got to be out because the bunt on the third strike if you don't hit it fair you're out so I was wondering if we had something crossed up here because she was just try, trying to bat. That's an out. So one out. Runner still on second. Now batting number 21, Brooke Bellflower. So Brooke Bell Bellflower, the first baseman for the Eagles, steps to the plate with one down and a runner on second. Um, one strike. No, that one's hit into left field. That's going to score the runner from second. And now the ball gets away from Gillen as she tries to relay it. And they're going to throw it home. Or she, the coach was sending her home. She did not go home. So we're going to have a single to left field. A double to left field. Is that over Savage to the fence? So a double scoring a run and then an error allowing her to move up to third. Now batting number one, Montana Stable. First pitch to number one, the cleanup hitter, left fielder, Montana Stengels, fouled off. So runner on third, a runner in, one out, and one strike. Yes, Kronza settling in here for the Blue Jays. Nice pitch, off-speed pitch. Stengel got just enough of it to keep it at least in play, but foul. So 0 and 2, the count now. It's Kronza working ahead again. She's been ahead on just about, I believe, every batter so far. Nice pitch just outside, but a very good pitch in that situation. No balls and two strikes. You don't want to throw it down the middle. You want to try to get them to chase. So really good pitch there by Kronza just off the plate for ball one. And off speed, blocked well by Ayala. So two and two now, the count. So two and two's the count. That's a good pitch, fouled off to the right side over the Blue Jay dugout, so we'll do it again. Bellflower on third. That pitch is driven deep to left field. That's probably going to get out of here. Just short. Yep, it's just over. So that one off-speed pitch driven over the left center fence for two-run home run. Puts the Eagles up two to or three to zero. 
One down here in the first. So the home run by Bellflower will bring up number 99, the designated player, Stephanie Hayes. So the Eagles use their speed to get on and move over into scoring position and then score the base hit and then a home run. So Kronza coming inside for ball one. Last outing, Kronza pitched a really good game up at Bethany in a 50 mile an hour wind it felt like coming straight in. Not many balls go out at Bethany on that situation and the Blue Jays came away with a nine inning one or two to one win in game one. We did lose game two one zero but we lost to the reigning KCAC pitcher of the year in that game so no shame in that. That pitch just a little low two and oh. So we'll see how Carranza responds here after giving up the home run. Two and one is our count, I should say. I'm just a little low in that way. So three and one. So Carranza can't quit challenging the hitters here. She's a little careful, but you don't want to just miss the zone. So. She can come back here from a 3-1 count. Good pitch. That's hit right to shortstop. Good play by the Blue Jays shortstop, number eight, Darcy Gillen. So two down. Now batting number 25, Julia Douglas. So Julia Douglas coming to the plate. Two down, three in here in the top of the first. Good job by Carranza to come back and force that line drive to Gillen for the out number two. Foul ball, 0-1. Count to the second baseman of the Eagles, number 25, Julia Douglas. Here after this half inning, we'll go ahead and set everything for you. We will keep it right here and get our lineup set. Off-speed pitch down in the dirt for ball one, so one and one. Blue Jays can score some runs. We know they can get the ball in play as well, so three runs, probably not safe right now, especially here in inning number one. That ball's fouled out of play. As Avila's come to swing the bats, that's for sure. One ball, two strikes. Let's see if she goes with the off-speed pitch here. But she does sometimes with two strikes or on that outside corner trying to get them to chase. We'll see what they call up. It's going to be rise ball. A little too high. Two and two. Good pitch there too though. You're going to be able to throw it down the middle with ball and two strikes. So. A little high as well. Counts full at three and two. That's a good pitch. It's going to be called a ball. So runner on first. Now batting number 27, Allie Campbell. That will bring number 27, the catcher of the Eagles, up to the plate, Holly Campbell. That ball, first pitch swing and hit right to the Staley. The Blue Jays shortstop will end the inning with three runs for the Eagles.
your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer. Serving Maryland County and... So we're going to keep it here and meet the lineups. Here's the Blue Jays starting lineup. The designated player, Michaela Garacio, wearing number 14, will lead off. The left fielder, Laura Savage, wearing number four, about second. Darcy Gillen made the play there at shortstop. For it was out number two. Number eight, we put batting third to clean up hitter. Today, playing first base, Jordan Farron, number 10, third baseman, number 57. Laney Ray Miller will be batting fifth. Ran out the Blue Jays lineup will be the second baseman, Peyton Staley. Uh, Reese Heffley will be batting seventh in right field. We're in number 20. Leah Ayala, the catcher, number okay. 17. Then Re Lauren Roberts, the center field, will be batting ninth. And we're in number yes. 22. And Marissa Kronza is the flex player, and she's pitching today for the Blue Jays. Michaela Galasio will be leading off for the Blue Jays. So the lefty takes down and away for ball one. See the Eagles playing in, expecting a bunt here. She pulls back down and away for ball two. and one the count to the leadoff batter for the Blue Jays that's going to be down the way so three and one so the Blue Jays can match Eagles get their leadoff hitter on to start their half of the first inning that was hit up the middle High bouncer, though, gets here at first base for the first out. So the left fielder for the Blue Jays, Savage, stepped to the plate. One down, nobody on. Last time they played here at home, Savage had a really good game at the plate. Two good games. Pulls that one left as the Blue Jays were leading Mack. And Mack scored, I believe it was seven runs to take a two or three, I think three run lead into the bottom. As you can see her batting 317 on the year. Six runs, eight RBIs. And Laura stepped to the plate and hit one to the left center fence and drove in the winning run for the Blue Jays to get the split. So good job by Savage last time here on this field. One and one's a count. That will be hitter. So that's going to hit her off the bounce. Put a Savage at first base. So Gillen steps in. Batting third for the Blue Jays. We'll see if the Blue Jays shortstop can get the ball into play. Darcy got a lot of power. Good timing. A lot of times the other day she was out front quite a bit and pulled a lot of foul balls. Pulled one foul past the fence. 
371 on the year as they started with an off-speed pitch, 0-1. So Savage on first. Got our first base camera there, Coach Andell out there at first trying to stay warm. Again, we're really pleased with our stream team here. We'll get to them here in just a little bit. That one's down the middle for strike two, so Gillum behind 0-2, but here at Tabor we have two cameras behind home plate. What you're seeing right now is our safe camera. We have a PTZ camera. That's what you're seeing now with zooming in on Coach Brewer down there at third. We got a first base and a third base camera. So got a good setup. Everything inside the fence. So you don't have to worry about looking through a fence here. Good job by Gillen staying on it with that pitch as that was kind of down and tailing away. Great job by Darcy. Shot down to third base. Couldn't quite handle it. Runners on first and second. One down. That bring Jordan, excuse me, Jordan Farron to the plate. Average 318 on the year. 55 ABs, 12 hits, 2, 8 RBIs, and 3 runs scored. She's been the designated player for the Blue Jays quite a bit. Again, Cheyenne back home in her room sick. So if you're listening, hopefully you'll get better quickly. So Jordan's pressed into first base duty today. That pitch is high for ball one. Hmm. Jordan, another one who can put the ball into play and she can get one in the gap here. We'd score one for sure. Fouled that one off to left side past Coach Brewer. So puts the count at one and one. Give a shout out to Sean Sumi, the Avila AD up there in Kansas City. Sure, he's in staying warm while we're out here being a little cooler. Hopefully, he's watching at home. I know he is. He texted me a little bit ago, so I know he's home watching. That's a strike. A little outside, maybe there, as he's first inning. Carranza threw a couple in that same spot and were balls. He was very consistent there, but that one, the same spot, and he calls a strike. So. Umpires settle in here as well, try to find their, their zone and their groove, just like the players do. That one's too far outside. They let that one go. So two and two. The count here on the designated, or excuse me, not today, the designated player, a first baseman for the Blue Jays. And the cleanup hitter, Jordan Farron. <laughs> That's high and away, but Farron chases that one. Doesn't do that often for out number two. Brings up Laney Ray Miller to the plate. Blue Jays would definitely like to at least get one, if not two, in here with two down. You see Laney Ray batting 388 on the year. Four RBIs and five runs. Be nice for her to pick another one. good pitch there by the Cotton. Head 0 and 1. Lady Ray Miller, a 5'9 junior out of Jordan, Utah. Played previously at Lake Region State College. That one's high. Good job by Miller to lay off of that. You'll see it on the roster. You'll have quite a few people from California, some from Utah and, and uh, Nevada out that way. Brewer every year spends about two weeks as we see Miller pull that foul in the summer on the road out recruiting that way. Takes 10 days to two weeks and heads out west and spends some time. His philosophy, I know, to listen to him and talking with him is you know, being in their homes and visiting these players in person and going out and seeing them, he think, feels that's important that their parents know who they're entrusting their child to for a couple years. That one's away. So Coach Brewer very personable and takes that right into his recruiting. 
Two and two's the count here to Miller. Runners on first and second, two down. That one's high. So full count, bases loaded, or excuse me, full count, two down. Runners on first and second. Runners will be taken off here. So it's legal to leave. Hopefully they do not leave early. That one's going to be high and away. So the walk to Miller will bring up the second baseman, Peyton Staley, for the Blue Jays. Peyton, the 5'3 junior out of Stansbury Park, Utah. So the Utah connection batting back to back with Miller and Staley. That's going to be in there for strike one over the plate right at the top of the zone for a one count. Staley. 286 on the year, 12 hits, 5 RBIs, 8 runs. I'd like to drive in a couple here. There's some room there in left center. She can get the ball out there and she pulls a foul, so it's 0 and 2. See if Staley can fight it off here and see Coach Brewer showing off his fielding skills there. The other day we were calling him the gazelle. He was moving like a gazelle over there at third with those foul balls coming at him. He was the biggest gazelle I ever seen, but he was he was moving quickly, so got time as the umpire. Something in his eye. It's going to do it again. 0 and 2. To Staley. That's going to be high. 1 and 2. Should be a good matchup today. Eagles have jumped out to a 3-0 lead here, but bases loaded here for the Blue Jays trying to get a couple of those runs back. That's fouled off to the right side. So we'll do it again. Blue Jays have swept Southwestern. Split with McPherson and split with Bethany for their four and two record. Again, Avila is right now leading the conference at six and zero. Oh, so Taylor needs to be on top of their game as Staley calls time. Curves outside, so definitely outside. You see the catcher, Campbell, for the Eagles asked the umpire, was that out? And he said yes. And you can tell from up here that it curved. Nice pitch with, with one ball and two strikes. Good pitch there. Didn't chase with Staley, so two and two. Trying to find the, the grass here. That one's fouled out of play again. Good job by Peyton to stay alive here and looking for something she can put into play. They called strike three. So Staley down looking. Blue Jays leave three on, come up empty there in the bottom of the first. So let's go ahead and finish taking a look at, let's go ahead and set the lineup for the Eagles. Leading off the center fielder, Chelsea Kurtz, right fielder Kazem Wood, batting second, first baseman Burke Bellflower, third. Cleanup hitter today for the Eagles, left fielder Montana Stengel. Designated player Stephanie Hayes, batting fifth, Julia 
Douglas batting six, playing second base. Seventh hitter, Hallie Campbell, the catcher. Katie Whitworth playing third base, followed by the shortstop, Kennedy Laura. See our starting pitchers. We see Cotton 8 and 2 on the year, the 2.37 ERA, 35 Ks. And the Blue Jays, Carranza, 4 and 5, the 3.04 ERA, and 21 Ks on the year. 3.77 Ks per 7 for Cotton, 4.76 for Carranza. There's our stream team, Ander Bengocha is up doing the switching. Mike Jameson will be in the replaying graphics. And David Loomis, our SID, is here doing the stats today as Nate Howard is out of town and I'll be bringing the action here. Okay, Leading off the top of the second for the Eagles, number 13, the third baseman, Katie Whitworth. <laughs> Umpires for today's contest behind the plate is Reese Lundgren. And out in the field, Mike Hennecamp. So the Blue Jays threatened, but come up empty in there. Half of the third as that one popped up and blows out of play. You see our camera crew trying to find that one. Good luck there. That was clear up out of play and behind us. So Carranza up 0-1. Done a nice job of getting ahead of pretty much all the hitters that she has faced. That's hit into center field. Roberts will have a beat on that one. Roberts a very good defensive center fielder. So the ball driven to the outfield for out number one. Now batting number nine, the shortstop Laura. The Kennedy Laura. So Kennedy and Laura coming up to bat four. The Eagles number nine hitter wearing number nine and playing shortstop. Fakes the bunt, pulls back for ball one. Tennis team is in action right up the complex here today as well. So if you are around Hillsborough and you're listening today, it's not too bad out. The wind's not blowing, it's a little chilly, but it's a good day to come out and watch a little softball or a little tennis. They're playing St. Mary. Just about 600 yards to our north. There at the Hillsborough Sports Complex. So 2-0. and The count now on Laura. So Kronza comes set. Gets a signal. Ready to throw it in. Nice pitch out right in the outside corner. About belt high. So 2-1. Crons go through her routine every time. She'll go back, grab a little bit of dirt on that left hand, wipe it off, get the sign, and ready to come home. Just a little outside. Good pitch. Just a little low and away. Started that one just a little too far outside. Three and one. It looks like our stream group is getting settled in, having to do ball strikes and runners and everything and stand up good job up there by those guys up in the box so the walk to Laura brings up the leadoff hitter center fielder number three Chelsea Kurtz who got on last time with a slow shot to Gillen at shortstop she very quick got down the line so we'll see what she does this time now batting Chelsea Kurtz So strike one on the leadoff hitter for Avila. The baseball team was supposed to go to Texarkana this weekend and rain down in Texas moved that. So they are off this weekend. They are going to pick up a game Tuesday. That ball slapped to the left side. Gillen is yelling for it. Good job by Darcy coming over. Much easier play for her to come that way than for Miller to look up and try to turn around and Good play by Gillen. Now batting for the Eagles, right fielder, Kazim Wood. So Wood steps in for the Eagles. One out, excuse me, two out, runner on first. Pitch just a little high from 
Carranza. So, 1 0. So, yeah, baseball team did pick up a game Tuesday. They will play up in Ottawa against Freed Hardman. My guess is Freed Hardman was probably coming up maybe to play Ottawa anyway, and the Blue Jays picked up a, a game up there. They're already down about three games because of weather. Now, now six games because of weather. They were going to play three down in Texas. So, trying to get some of those made up. One on one's a count to Wood. Nice pitch by Carranza. That's going to go out of play. So one and two. Ball just a little outside. She's going to be out as the throw by Ayala down to second base to Gillen. Couldn't quite tell. Maybe we can get a replay there. Looked like she might have swung and maybe even missed her, but maybe came back and tagged her. She's called out. The ball did beat her down there. I think we're... We're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a minute. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Many of you know the big Now that is for the DJs. Grant Builder, number 23. So we're back here. Kronza did a very good job of bouncing back after that three-run first inning. Only allowed one runner in the top of the second. So the Blue Jays back to work as Heffley's in the box for Tabor. The lefty swings and fouls that one straight back. So Reese, the Hillsboro native, just lives right down the road here from the complex. Of course, if you live in Hillsboro, you're just right down the road from about anything. Is uh, That's... That's where we live. Reese batting 222 on the year. Three runs, four RBIs. Reese swings underneath that one, so it's one and one, or excuse me, 0 oh and two. Reese, one of our best defensive players by far, a really good arm out there in right field. Trying to find her way on base here to get the Blue Jays a leadoff runner. That's gonna be too far outside, one and two. Cotton trying to get her to chase, but threw that one a little too far in the other box, so Heffley lays off of that one. Pounds that one into the ground. She's going to get tagged there by the second baseman, Douglas. So one away. So Layla Ayala steps in. I know I butcher that half the time. That's a tongue twister for me. I'm trying to get it going. 3A48 on the year. 23 ABs. Two RBIs and a run for the Blue Jay catcher. Out of Lodi, California, Junior. Takes ball one. Again, as I mentioned earlier, Coach Brewer, a lot of luck recruiting Nevada, Utah, and California, as well as the other ones right around this area. Strike in there, even the count at one and one. Oh, 
That ball's driven into the center field, but played perfectly there by the Eagles center fielder with a lot of speed. So a good line drive shot by the Blue Jay catcher, but it's out number two. Now batting center fielder number 22, Lauren Roberts. So Roberts steps to the plate for the Blue Jays. Two, two down here in the bottom of the second. 3-2 Eagles here at Blue Jay Field. That ball's up and away for ball one. That ball's fouled off the bat and then off the helmet of Campbell for strike one. So Roberts trying to get something working here for the Blue Jays. Bottom of the second. Game one of a two-game set. Lord Roberts about 259 on the year. Scored six runs. Three driven in by the Blue Jays center fielder. That ball just at the top of the zone. Roberts takes a swing at it and fouls it back. One and two. <laughs> Off-speed pitch gets Roberts. Blue Jays do not threaten here in the bottom of the second. 3-0 Ava back in a minute. Estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Four. Wood will lead it off here for the Eagles at the top of the third. Raise up! 
trying to get some subs switched in here. Owen oh, two on wood. That one's high and away. So one and two's the count now to the right fielder for Avila. She fouls that one off to the right side. Remains one and two. That one's high and inside, even the count at two and two. Balls head down to right center. It's going to one hop the fence. Heffley's going to come up with it. Gets it in. So Avila has a leadoff double by Wood. Now batting number 21, first baseman Brooke Beltower. So Avila gets the leadoff hitter on second with Bellflower now stepping to the plate. That ball's fouled off to the right side, 0 and 1. So Kron's a pitching well. Avila's just getting the best ever on a few of them here. Kron's hanging in there, throwing a lot of strikes, getting ahead to a, of a lot of batters. <coughs> 0 and 1. That one's hit past Farron at first. And off the glove of Heffley. So that's going to score one. And. Bellflower will take the place of Wood at second, bringing up Stengel for the Eagles. Now batting the fielder, Montana Stengel. Strike route right in the outside corner for Stengel. So 0 and 2, Kronza once again working ahead. See if she can get out number one here to start the third. That's going to be a little outside. So one and two. Eagles up 4-0. Put, picked up one here to start the top of the third. A little inside. Not much, as you'd think, as a batter really kind of dove out of the way there. But that was not off the plate much as Ayala is asking. Because once the umpire moved, it looked like it could have been right on the corner, but of course Ayala would have brought that back in just a little bit. That one's inside a little too far. Two and two, three and two, full count. Heffley going back. Great catch by Reese. Range into her right. Excuse me, her left, but turned her back and took off. 
Nice play by Heffling, got it in quickly, so runner will move up as Reese had a good catch out in right field, but had the momentum carrying her away. Get allowed the runner to tag up and go away. Now batting Stephanie Hayes. So good job by Heffley again. The runner did move up there. Reese didn't have anything she could do about that, but good catch for out number one. Hayes up back to bat now. and O is the count on Hayes. That's don't know where that missed. That was that's a nice pitch. As he says down. Three and O. That was really good pitch by Carranza. That's going to be a ball for us. Runners on the corners with one down. I've seen the Blue Jays turn a couple double plays this year, so we get a ball hit in the right spot to be able to do that. As we see Coach Brewer coming out. So we see a replay here. That ball hit out into right field. As we see Heffley just long enough. As, boy, she really had to stretch to her... Her glove hand, of course she's left-handed, so we put that glove on the right hand. Had to stretch way out there, caught it right in the end of the glove, got it in quickly. But we have runners in the corners now for the Eagles. We see some KCC standings. We saw Avila's leading the way right now. Evangel, Oklahoma Wesleyan, Ottawa, Friends, and Tabor. Rounding out the top, the rest of the conference. Sterling, McPherson, St. Mary, Bethel, York, K-Dub, and Bethany rounding out the standings for. So we go back to that first slide of standings again. If I get my booth guys to put that first slide back up. You can see right now there are a bunch of teams log jammed up there at 6-0 and and then 5-1, and 3-1, and and then 3 at 4-2. and So a lot of the teams just early in the season in conference play yet, a lot of softball to be played, so a lot of movement possible there as we come back to action here at Coach Brewer off the field now done talking with Carranza and she's ready to get back in the circle probably just a quick conversation to calm everybody down and remind them hey we can turn double play and get right out of this so takes off to second they're going to concede the run and get the out so Really good play really by both teams there as we did throw down. That's probably nothing Coach Brewer was talking about. As we threw down, the runner took off immediately, so you're not going to get her. So let her go and get the out. So 5-0, two down, and no balls, no balls and a strike. That was a strike is what the umpire just said. We couldn't figure it out for sure. Although he's watching the action. For, that one's fouled out. So that's going to be 0-2. So that's a pretty good play by the Blue Jays really. You don't like giving up a run. But last thing you want to do is start throwing it home. And then you don't get the out. And then you have a runner at second. And just get the out. Still early here in only the third inning. Blue Jays can score. Don't get too much further behind though. Good off-speed pitch. That's hit pretty slow. And Miller can't. He's trying to hurry it just because she had to. If she doesn't pick that up cleanly and fire it over, there's no chance. So I think that would be an infield hit. Now batting number 27, Haley Campbell. So Campbell going to bat now for the Eagles. That one's low and away for ball one. Now 
That's hit to Staley at second base. Good play by Peyton over to Farron. So three down, retires the side there for the Eagles. 5-0 Avila. Blue Jays are batting bottom of third. Back in a minute. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Now batting for the Blue Jays. Number 14, Michaela Garofio. We'll keep it here, but I'm not for sure what. Looks like one of our umpires that maybe had to go do something as we're one umpire short. And here he comes. So it looks like we're back. There's a shot of some ugly guy. The heck Jameson's doing there, putting camera here in the press box. But uh, now we're back to action. 5-0, Avila leading the Blue Jays. They picked up three in the first, none in the second, and two there in the third. Tabor threatened there in the first with bases loaded, two down, but couldn't get anybody in. So. Garacio going to see if she can start putting something together for the Blue Jays. That's strike one on the outside corner. Tabor needs to get some runners on and start chipping away at this eagle lead. A bunt attempt goes backwards, so out of play. So she's going to be swinging away here with two strikes. Game one of a doubleheader. Ball's hit right back to the pitcher over to first for out number one. Now batting for the Blue Jays. So Savage will step to the plate for the Blue Jays. Again, Tabor just needs to get some runners on. She's batting 316 on the year. 60 at bats, 19 hits, 8 RBIs, and 6 runs scored. Ball's up and away for ball one. Savage, a 5'10 junior from Florence, Kansas. Talked about some of our players from 
strike one. Talking to some players from Nevada and Utah and California that our outfield is made up of two of the Marion County ladies. And that's Laura playing left and Reese plays right. And Lauren Roberts, our center fielder, is from Olathe, Kansas. So we have an all-Kansas outfield. One ball, two strikes is the count on Savage. That ticked her. So she's going to go to first base as that hit her. Definitely hit her. I could hear the tick up here. As the umpire's going to call her back, and that's not the right call. That ball definitely hit Savage on the elbow. You know what? Going to call two and two, but that ball definitely clipped her on the elbow. So that that's that's a missed call. As he was just going to let her go until the catcher turned around and said something. That definitely did clip her on the elbow. Nonetheless, she's back to do it again at two and two. That's out. So three and two. So counts full. One down. Savage fouls that one off to keep the count full. That ball. Strike three. That looked low, so. Call's not going the Blue Jays' way here. The shit had a runner on first. That was definitely low. Shouldn't have been in that situation anyway, but these umpires do a really good job at that. They, they missed that one pretty bad with the, the hit by pitch. And then a low and inside for strike three. Gillen to bat now for the Blue Jays. Coach Brewer pretty upset on that last sequence of events. So instead of Tabor having one one out and a runner on first, we have two down and now a runner on first with that hit by Darcy Gillen. So now Jordan Farron comes to bat for the Blue Jays. Farron batting 218 on the year, three, RB, three runs and eight RBIs. Let's see if Jordan can get something going with Darcy on first. That one's fouled off. That one's high. As it looks like it's starting to maybe rain a little bit here. Sounds like it's hitting our press box. As I didn't think there was any rain in the forecast, but it's coming down now, so. But the only good thing is there's no wind today, so. It is raining a little bit here. 
That one's out past the shortstop, so the Blue Jays in business now. Two runners on, two down here in the bottom of the third. Now batting, third baseman, Lenny Ray Miller. So Coach Kennedy going to come out, have a talk with his pitcher and his squad. The Blue Jays are threatening here. Now it sounds like the rain may have quit, as I'm not for sure. Miller batting 388, four RBIs and five runs on the year. So conversation is over for the Eagles. The Blue Jays send their runners back to the bases. Have Gillen on second, Farron on first, and Miller to the plate. It'd be a great time now for Lane to drive one deep here. See if we can't get a couple of runs. Get right back in this game. He finds us top of the zone for strike one. Good pitch there by Cotton. Blue starter still in the game for each team. Cotton gets a signal ready to throw and Miller's in the box ready to go. Miller a little late on that one so strike two. Miller down 0-2. Let's see what Cotton comes with here. That ball's fouled in the glove for out three. Strike three and out three. Blue Jays down 5-0 at the end of the third. Back in a minute. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Third baseman, number 13, Katie Whitworth. Whitworth to lead it off for the Eagles. Top of the fourth. You just saw the hype video for our baseball team. They were again supposed to be down in Texas this weekend. Got rained out. So they actually are picking up a game on Tuesday at Ottawa. Ball's a little high. So Carranza starts off 1-0. To Wentworth. Blue Jays have threatened in the first and the third and couldn't put anything across as that off speed pitch is grounded foul to the left side. So the Eagles have capitalized a couple innings and the Blue Jays have not. That's been the difference right now in the game. Two seven inning games. Ball's low, two and one. Three and one.
Strike three called, so Kronza gets an out to start the inning. So, now batting number nine, Kennedy Laura. So, Kronza pitching to Laura. Hit to Staley at second. Got to get rid of it quickly and throws it away. Actually kind of throws it a little, a little high it looked like. Again, Farron playing first base today with Washington home. Sick. So Kurtz stepping in for the Eagles. One down, one on first. Got one ball, one strike. Sure, what the discussion is here about? The, the ball hit the bat. He thinks the ball hit the bat. Is Coach Brewer? We're trying to watch on the replay here, so he's going to go out and ask his other umpire. Is it kind of looks like it may have moved just a little bit, but I really can't tell for sure here. Ball's high and got away from the Blue Jay catcher, Ayala. So it's two and one, I believe, is a count here on the nine hole batter, excuse me, the leadoff batter. That is a three. Good hit on the. The right side, Staley couldn't quite pick it up, and I think the speed of Kurtz is bothering Blue Jays a little bit here. She gets down the line very quickly, so one out, runners on first and third. Now batting right fielder number two, Kazim Wood. I would look for Kurtz probably to take off here right away. Yeah, if the Blue Jays throw down, probably send the runner from third like they did a while ago, but Kurtz is probably going to get to first, second, the butt attempt. The Blue Jays try to throw it to second baseman who was coming in, and the throw goes wide out into the outfield, so Blue Jays defense a little off right now as 6-0, and Brewer is going to call a timeout. We'll keep it here. as the speed of Avila seems to be getting better to the Blue Jays at this point.
So the Blue Jays defense are usually pretty solid. And again, as I mentioned earlier, they've played some very good teams so far. Their trip out to Arizona. But Avila seems to put, put the pressure on the Blue Jays right now. As Wood is at the plate, runner did score to make it 6-0. And Kurtz is all the way around to third. That one's fouled straight back. So one and one, the count to Wood. Kronza trying to settle in here in the top of the fourth. That bunt straight to Kronza. As the throw goes over, Farron was coming in on the bunt, and then she stopped because Carranza had it, and the throw to her short of first base instead of Staley at first base. So another run in. Now batting, number 21, Brooke Belfire. So Blue Jays a little rattled here in the top of the fourth. 7-0 Avila. That's low, and the runner goes. And that was thrown into center field, but Roberts right there. There's a runner in scoring position again for the Eagles. That's going to be a strike as Wood kind of caught between right there with the ball getting away from Ayala just a little bit, but not far enough. She retreats back to second base. So Bellflower steps back in the box. One and one, one down. And that ball's ripped past Miller at third. Savage gets it in quickly. They have a good play at home. And she was safe because she dropped the ball. So Blue Jays had an easy one there at home. Ayala tried to tag a little too quick. Didn't have the ball firm in her glove. So 8-0 Avila. So a pinch runner, Samantha Gatia. He's a second base. Stengel now batting for Ava, the left fielder. Things start to unravel for the Blue Jays here in the top of the fourth. The first five runs they got were pretty much earned. Right now the Blue Jay defense struggling a little bit here in this inning, but Kronza starts with the ball on the inside corner. And Stengel did offer it that one enough, so 0-2. And strikeout. So the second strikeout, I believe, of the inning for Carranza. That's going to be out number two. Now batting, number 17, Kylie Kite. 
So Kylie Kite stepping in, batting now for the Eagles. 5'5 five five senior out of Locust Grove, Georgia. Two down, runner on second. Another strike by Carranza on the inside corner. Little check swing. Out at first, so good play by Farron to Staley. Gets her just in time. That's the. As here's the replay of that. What is it? 21. Okay. Is that's going to be a close play? Confusion on our replay there, and that was the one from earlier. But Peyton Staley now up to bat for the Blue Jays. Foul tip in the glove of Campbell, so. Staley down 0 and 1. Grounder back to the pitcher. And that's for out number one. So Heffley up to the plate now for the Blue Jays. Heffley right back to the pitcher once again. So Cotton busy here in the bottom of the fourth. Two up, two down. So Ayala up to bat for the Blue Jays. So Owen, excuse me, two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Pretty good pitch there by Cotton. Must have been low. 1-0 and oh to the Blue Jay catcher. Outside, 2-0. Blue Jays just trying to get a runner on and scratch a run across any way possible here to cut into this 8-0 eagle lead. Balls you down the middle, strike one, two and one to count. Check swing, fouls it off to the right side. Puts count at two and two.
Strike three called on the Blue Jays for out number three. Going into the fifth, Avila up 8-0. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. So the Blue Jays make a pitching change. Chloe Uturbity Reader will be pitching for the Blue Jays, a 5 4 junior out of Reno, Nevada, from Feather River College. We'll see what the junior from Reno can do, see if she can hold. So we'll have several changes for the Eagles as well as we'll get to we'll get to them as they come to the plate. As I was saying earlier, see if the junior from Reno, Nevada can do. Came to Tabor, previously played at Feather River College. A little different pitcher than Carranza. She's right-handed, obviously. Carranza left-handed. So it'll give me a little different look to the Nice speed, really good movement. She's called upon to keep this lead at 8 0. If it gets to 10 after 5. Excuse me, 8 after 5. That is the run rule in softball. Got to get my mind switched over from baseball to softball here. Softball is 10 after 7. Softball is eight after five, so hopefully Chloe can keep things in check here. As number 16, Ma Ma Maya Richards steps to the plate for Avila. That one's grounded right to Farron at first base for out number one. So one pitch, one out. So good start for Chloe coming in for the Blue Jays. So number 23, Myra Megley, will pinch hit here for the Eagles as well. That's one of the substitutions at three. That one's going to be a strike. That one's fouled off towards the uh, Batting cages of the Blue Jays, so 0 and 2. You Turby Reader. Looking good so far for the Blue Jays. That's a little popper to second base. Hauled in by Staley for out number two. Wilds. 
So strike one by Euterbidi Reader. And she's come in looked sharp here for Tabor. Again, trying to hold this lead to eight. Nice pitch there, 0-1, two down. That was a little high. Counts even at 1-1. One and one. That's going to be out of play as it's off the top of the dugout. So one ball, two strikes. Be nice to shut this down right here. That one's going to be inside and low as that off-speed pitch evens the count at two and two. Maybe give the Blue Jays some momentum here if we just go three up and three down, get right back into the dugout and get some bats going. That one's pulled over the left field foul fence. That ball's popped up. Staley calling for it at second. She hauls it in for out number three. Eight zero Eagles. Coming back here for the bottom of the fifth. Just a minute. that the Eitan Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitan Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitsonAgency.com. Many of you know that... Now batting for the Blue Jays. The center fielder, number 22, Lauren Roberts. We come up to the plate now. She's been in. Come up to the plate as Roberts is on first. Again, Tabor needs a run here. Big little butt foul there's a big hole in right center as the center fielder Kurtz is playing short and way on the left side she does have an awful lot of speed but that's a big hole between her and Wood over in right center That bunt's going to move Roberts over to second. So Gracio out at first does put a runner into scoring position, bringing up Savage for the Blue Jays. As I mentioned earlier, Savage has had a really good couple games of the plate here a week or so ago when we played McPherson. So you can find that left center fence again. Would be playing a little bit longer for sure in game one. And she fouls it to the left side. 0 and 1 on the left fielder of the Blue Jays. So 
He tries to bunt Roberts over to third. And that's foul. So 0-2. Bunts out of play here pretty much for Savage now. She can get those long arms extended and get the bat out. Get the barrel of the bat on the ball. She can send it a good distance and should score Roberts. There she used her long arms to stay alive as that ball was tailing away from her. So good pitch there by Cotton. Started out on the outside corner and it just kept tailing away and Savage just got enough of it to stay alive. And that's going to be just foul. Umpire right on that one. Good call. That ball goes right down the line. Just six inches foul there. We'll come back and do it again. 0-2. And, Pretty close to take there with two strikes. Savage does one and two. Again, Savage can find find the grass out there. I think Brewer will send Roberts. Decent speed out there at second base. That one's popped up. Going to be caught by the first baseman for out number two. So Blue Jays down to their final out here. So Gillen stepping in for the Blue Jays. Eleven RBIs, ten runs scored, batting 371. Could definitely use a hit here by Gillen. That's up the middle. That's going to score Roberts. And that's going to keep the Blue Jays alive for another inning. Good hit by Gillen. Right up the middle. So the Blue Jays still alive. Bringing up Jordan Farron to the plate. So this game will go at least another inning. Maybe the Blue Jays can keep scratching away here. Farron batting 218 on the year, eight RBIs and three runs scored. Then Jordan pressed into action to play first base today with Cheyenne not feeling well. That one fouled out of play, 0-1 to the Blue Jay first baseman. That one hit up in there to second baseman as she drip, drifts back. A good play there by number 25, Julie Douglas, in, Douglas to end the inning. 8-1 Blue Jays trail going in the top of the sixth. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Bye. 
batting number nine, Kennedy Laura. So Chloe Uter Beatty Ryder, I keep messing that up, is back in for her second inning of work. Uterbity Ryder. I can say it if I'm not on the stream. Nice pitch trails and tails to the inside though for ball one. Started over the plate and didn't quite stay there, so it was inside for a ball. Coming the last inning, gave the Blue Jays some life. Seemed to spark their bats a little bit as well as they picked up one. 8-1 Avila. Ball two. That one was low. So Laura trying to get on for Avila. Two balls and a strike. As the sun's starting to come out a little bit more here at Blue Jay Field. Three and one. So the top of the sixth. Now we're going to try to get that one run back and try to hold Tabor. That one's hit over to third base. Laney Ray Miller pulls it in and over to Farron for out number one. So Blue Jay defense sharp here to start the top of the sixth. Bringing up number three, Chelsea Kirch to the plate for Avila. Now batting number three, Chelsea Kirch. The bunt, bat pulled back but called for strike. So 0-1. I'm not sure the Blue Jays have retired her yet today. Maybe once. Not for sure. Speed has really bothered Tabor. That one is high. 1-1. One one. That's a little check swing over Darcy's head at short. Savage pulls it in on the right on the edge of the grass. So runner now at first with one down and Wood to the plate. Now batting number two, Kazim Wood. I would look for Kurtz to take off here again. She may have left early there. She's down there. She does not ever need to leave early, but she looked like she might have. If we get a replay of that or not from the first base camera. Looks like she's gone early, but nonetheless, no call, no challenge. Now she's going to third, and Miller comes in for the bunt. And then can't get back to the bag in time. So now she's over at third. So two pitches. She's now on third. You got one and two, don't you? Yeah, one and two. We got one and two. One ball, two strikes? Yeah. One ball, two strikes. One ball, two strikes. A little confusion. That's what you have, right? Yeah. Yeah, we have one ball, two strikes. The field umpire has one ball, two strikes.
count? Yes, you went the second on the first one. All right, third on the second one. That's two pitches. And then she had the, the last pitch. They didn't throw it. what they have. They haven't thrown the last pitch. Hey, Ruth. Yeah. I think she, she, she's only thrown the two pitches. I thought, yeah. Right, right, right. One more upside. Come on. Come on. It should be oh it should it should be oh and two. Yes, that's it. Now we got seven, it's oh and two. That should be the correct count. Oh and two. That one's hit straight up in the air. Good catch by Jordan at first. So that's going to be out number two. So after all that, we got it settled out. Two down. 8-1 with Bellflower stepping in. Now that is Brooks Bellflower. That ball's out, and she decides to head back to third. So, ball got away from Ayala. One and oh. That one's a foul ball, just curved left to land in foul territory, so it's one and one. Chloe comes set. A little high. Two and one. That two one pitch is driven into center field and over. So Roberts runs out of room. Bellflower sends it over the center field fence. That's going to put Eagles back up 10-1. As Roberts couldn't quite get to that one, that was over the fence. She's kind of tapping her chest like it's her fault, but I don't, I don't know if she got back enough where she could even got up on the fence. I think that was over. So nothing on, on Lauren. That ball just over the 210 marker. Now batting number one, Montana Stengel. And maybe she was just saying, as my Coach Jamison in the booth said, maybe she's just saying she's okay because the fence kind of knocked her down. So maybe they're just checking on her. 0 and 1, or 1 and 0 to Stengel. So Avila back up by nine now, 10 to one here in the top of the sixth. And that's skied out to right field. Hefley back, she's under, she's got it for out number three. 10-1 Avila, they pick up two more here in the top of the sixth. Back in a minute.
that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Now batting for the Blue Jays, third baseman, number 57, Lanny Ray Miller. So Miller stepping into the box for the Blue Jays here to start the bottom of the sixth. Tabor needs two runs to keep this game going. Trying to find some other scores around the conference. Bethany defeats Franz four to two in game one. That's kind of a surprise there. As Franz definitely toward the top of the conference, and Bethany did earn the split with Tabor of the day, and they do have a good a good squad, just haven't put it together yet. McPherson trailing St. Mary at home four to zero in the bottom of the seventh there. KW at home, defeat, uh, ahead of Ottawa, 3-2 in the bottom of the fourth. Oklahoma Wesleyan up 7-5 at Bethel, top of the seventh. And Evangel taking care of York on the road, 17-3 in the bottom of the fifth. That should be all of our softball scores as of now. Miller gets into that one left, but it's going to be foul. So Miller down 1-2. That one's high. Counts evened at 2-2. Two two. Again, Tabor trying to get runners on however they can here to get this game extended into the seventh inning. 10-1 Avila. Miller staying on that pitch as it's curving away. Good pitch there by Cotton. Starts over the middle to outer part and kept telling away from her. And Laney Ray, good job of staying with that and just knocking it out of play to survive one more pitch here at least. Nice hit by Miller right back up the shoot, and that gets away from Kurtz in the outfield <clears throat> as Miller's now at second with a single and an error. Brings up number six, Staley for the Blue Jays. Number six, Staley. 
so Staley <coughs> looking to keep things going here for Tabor. Nobody out. Miller on second. Staley at the plate as Cotton delivers home. She hurries. She might get that one beat out. Just got her by a step. So does move the runner over to third. Tabor's going to need more than that runner. As number 20, Reese Heffley, steps in for the Blue Jays. So Miller at third, Heffley at the plate. Ball's outside for ball one. Sophomore from here in Hillsboro, looking to get the bat on the ball. That's going to be ball two. So two and zero. Oh. Count to Heffley. That was right on the inside corner for two and one. One's back to the pitcher again, and that's going to be out number one, or excuse me, out number two. So Layla Ayala now up to bat for the Blue Jays, trying to keep Tabor going. We're going to, have to get two runs here, so Miller run at third. And that's away, but Miller's going to hold there. No need in risking out number three at the plate when the ball's not away that far. Nice pitch by Cotton. Spins it right over the outside corner for strike one. So one and one, two down. 10-1 Eagles here, bottom of the sixth in game one. Too far outside. Nice pitch, just a little off the plate, so two and one. Miller drives that one into right field. That's going to get down and past the diving right fielder. That's going to score Miller. So Ayala draws the throw to third, but stays at second. So that ball tailed away just enough from Wood and got past her. So the double brings in Miller. So a double on RBI for the Blue Jay catcher. We have a visit to the circle. We'll keep it here as it looks like Coach Brewer is probably going to do some pinch running for Ayala. Roberts will be up to bat for the Blue Jays. So we see the replay of that. Ball is hit. It was perfectly placed into right field. So we see Rena Enriquez come in at second base. 
to replace Ayala and Roberts up to bat. So if Roberts can knock Enriquez in, Tabor would stay alive for another inning. Swing by Roberts and the one that down low, 0 and 1. That's still a big hill for the Blue Jays to, to climb, being down 10 2 to a quality club like Avila. But if you can push one in or another one in and just keep keep fighting, that's what you're looking for at this point for the Tabor. Strike two, right at the numbers, across the plate. So 0 and 2. Letters, I should say, on the front of the jersey. 0-2. Roberts looking to keep it going here for Tabor. Nice pitch, but up and away. That ball started on the outside corner and just kept curving away. So good job by Roberts to lay off of that pitch by Cotton. Cotton's pitched a good game here for Avila. Got to give her credit. She's done a good job keeping the Blue Jays in check. That ball's upstairs as well, so two and two. The count now on center fielder of the Blue Jays. That one's lined out to the shortstop to end the ball game, 10-2. Avila will take game one. We'll be back in about 30 minutes for game number two.